when it comes to uh, my role as a teacher, it is an identity. It's a habit. It's a habitus. It's the field in which I live. It's the plane on which I thrive. I can be a great writer, I think. I have a big imagination. I grew up playing in churches, so in terms of music, I could have excelled very well. I could have, I think I could have done well in many, many kinds of positions. Uh, and I was a great, since I was a great preacher, and I enjoyed it. But nothing has captured my sense of being and purpose than being a teacher, an educator. I've taught third grade, I've taught sixth grade, I taught 11th grade until they got bigger than me, and then I decided it was time to teach college and, and, and particularly uh, older people. And so theological education has been uh, uh, who I am, but the, the idea of a teacher comes from my admiration of teachers. The teachers that influenced me, when well, you're an educator, and the world of experience is so wide. People who see that love of education in you will find themselves coming to you. They become more vulnerable to you. They, they make themselves vulnerable because they say, hey, I see the excitement of what turns him on and I want to be turned on about religion just like that. I mean, being a religion professor, uh, it's not the most glamorous position you can have among the, uh, the field of education. In many ways, it's also one of the most misunderstood. So it became a, a constant challenge. Why religion and why a teacher of religion? And I think that's rooted once again into my sense of the wideness of religious experience that can map onto all kinds of knowledges. I'm helping my students map onto a bigger world, but they're helping me to see the world larger. So it's, it's not, uh, teaching is not just uh, a, a one-way uh, position where uh, you are the expert. And being an expert, your, your job is to disseminate the knowledge into empty minds. Now for every student that I teach, I know that they already come with a world of experience. They come with experiences that I don't have because they come from different families. Our families are not the same. Our neighborhoods are not the same. Our colors of skin colors are not the same. Our ethnicities are not the same. And our religious backgrounds are not the same. When they come, imagine all of that in one space. That is a world of difference that is powerfully opened up to me. I'm the lucky one that I have this field of all this world of experience before me. Now what do you do with it? It's a dialogical process for me teaching. It's a matter of uh, uh, being in conversation and interpreting the languages of their faiths, the language of their homes, and the languages of their concerns, uh, uh, and, and being able to speak back to that, to speak back to that out of a, uh, the years of reading, out of decades of study, out of the adventure, as Whitehead would have put it, out of a world of adventure of ideas. Ideas that my students may not be, have been exposed to, but I have it. And as I listen to their concerns, and as I uh, and try to translate it through uh, the languages of my studies, whether it's in philosophy, whether it's in philosophy of religion, whether it's in ethics and moral languages, what I bring is a, is a foul cabinet of ideas. So that as we're talking, as we're experiencing, as we're reading different texts, I feel comfortable to go to the file cabinet of my mind and say, hey, think about this. Have you read this? Have you read Plato on this? Have, when you want to talk about politics, have you read the Republic? Oh, you must read the Republic. When you, so, so really it's the translation between study and acquired knowledges and it's translation into the world of experience of the student. But once again, that's not an expert to uh, uh, empty vessels. That's people bringing their own lives, their lived experience to bear. The teacher is one that models. Models what it is to be a learner, but also models what it is to have already acquired a set of knowledge tools that I can get about in the world with. If I'm not open to learning, which is a, a power. 
The power to learn is to be vulnerable to even voices that you think have nothing to offer you. But when you are vulnerable that way, I learned something about myself. I learned something about my own practices. I learned sometimes I can be rather harsh. Though in my head I don't see myself in Sometimes I say things to students so quick and so sharp that I hurt their feelings. And that's not my intention. But when they come back and say, you know, that hurt. And I have to say to myself, wow, I didn't mean for that to happen. I have to now go introspectively. And that's, are my practices, have they become dogmatic? If I assumed a mass of power over my students that I enjoy and I ought not to, it becomes when, it's all, when the teacher is learning, herself is learning, uh, it's the question of uh, introspection. Reassessment of one's own tools and one's own habits and one's own practices is what I think keeps teaching alive, what makes it a happy uh, task. I see it on the face. It's not because a student has repeated something I've given or that uh, an exam comes back perfect as an A. Sometimes it's in the change disposition. I would say most times it's in the change disposition that this idea really struck, stuck, and made a change. In other words, what I've learned and what I've acquired, and, and when the student says, Dr. Anderson, I took your course 10 years ago, and I want you to know that little metaphor you told, that story you told in your class, I tell to my students all the time, I tell the church all the time. And I want to know for now, what was it about that story, that metaphor, that particular idea, or that particular day that stuck, stuck them in such a way that they said, well, that was life changing. You don't know, and one of the one of the difficult part of teaching, you don't get immediate gratification. But as the time passed, as you meet students you encounter, it is amazing the things they remember from a simple class, from one class encounter. That's where I know I've done something right. Something went right there. And when their lives are affected, 